In 2019, this new BMW marked the start of a new production in a car plant in Western Russia. Today, it is Chinese cars coming off the assembly line. The factory produced tens of thousands of vehicles, including Ford trucks, German BMWs, and South Korean Hyundais every year, until Russia's invasion of Ukraine. As international sanctions prompted foreign automakers to leave the country, Chinese brands filled the void, making billions of dollars. Car makers who have been struggling in the domestic market in China, they're finding an opportunistic moment um, when it comes to the Russian market. Here's how Chinese car makers are profiting from the Western corporate exodus and what it means for Russia's auto market. Car making is one of Russia's main industries. It employed some 300,000 people directly and produced vehicles and parts worth about $42 billion in 2020. The first Renault created for the Russian market. Foreign automakers opened factories and partnered with local brands, pushing Russia into the ranks of the world's top car producers. And Russians eagerly embraced foreign cars, with Japanese, Korean and European brands dominating the market for years. But Moscow's invasion of Ukraine hit the industry hard. Western sanctions cut off Russia's access to global supply chains for essential parts, such as computer chips, prompting many foreign brands to halt production or withdraw from the country. Soaring inflation and uncertainty contributed to a dramatic drop in car sales in the country last year. But assembly lines didn't stay idle for long. Demand started to pick up as Chinese brands stepped in. Car dealerships across Russia started reopening under new brands. For example, this showroom outside Moscow changed from Nissan to Kaiyi from China. Russian buyers became more familiar with Chinese cars. Chinese SUVs have even been spotted in the Kremlin's motorcades. By mid-2023, the list of the 10 most popular car brands in Russia looked very different to before the war. Six of them were Chinese. This year, Russia became the number one buyer of Chinese vehicles, spending some $6 billion in the first four months of 2023, helping China to become the world's largest auto exporter. So the exports to Russia have got an outsized importance, especially for the car makers who have struggled to pivot to a successful EV strategy. Within China, the sales of petroleum powered vehicles have dropped, so they now have some excess capacity, and Russia presents a good opportunity for these car makers. But Russia's market also poses challenges. As Chinese car brands become more mature, I think a lot of them are seriously considering the prospect of one day become the world's biggest auto manufacturer. And in the grand scheme of things, Russia may not be a big consideration for them because of the constraints in this market at present. Chinese automakers are also not immune to the bad publicity that comes with working in Russia. In June, in a symbolic gesture, Ukraine branded Chinese maker Geely as a sponsor of war for continuing operations in Russia. Companies like Geely have multiple brands and some of these brands are trying to explore the Western European market. So if they make a big push in Russia, then it may cause them other problems in terms of drill political risks because it may not be well regarded in front of Western European consumers. Geely declined to comment on the challenges related to its operations in Russia. Russia's Afterdoor plant, which now produces Chinese passenger cars, didn't respond to a request for comment. Chinese automakers' expansion into the Russian market highlights the ever closer ties between Beijing and Moscow. At the moment, the relationship appears to be mutually beneficial. However, the question is whether Chinese brands are willing to keep taking the risks associated with Russia and manage the unpredictable nature of doing business there in the long run.